Welcome back. The Detroit Regional Chamber is out with its State of the Region report. Pretty complicated project, one would think, given the pandemic and trying to figure out exactly where on the timeline we are. Let's talk about it with Sandy Barua, the head of the Detroit Regional Chamber. Dennis Archer Jr. up there on the upper left on his birthday weekend, by the way, joins us. He's the head of Ignition Media. Happy birthday, Dennis. And Chad Livengood, the senior editor of Crane's Detroit Business. Sandy, start. let me start with you. Um, you describe uh, in, in this document a, a a K-shaped recovery. Uh, for those unfamiliar with what, what that means, tell me what you see. Yeah, there's two big findings out of the report. One of them is certainly the K-shape. And what the K-shape refers to is that simultaneously two things are happening. One, a big chunk of our society and a big chunk of our sectors are not just doing well, but they're actually thriving. But simultaneously, we are seeing sectors and certain demographic groups doing poorly and getting worse. So those two things are happening uh, simultaneously. It's the opposite of you know, what we used to hear about a rising tide lifts all boats. And the other finding that you think is key to this. Yeah, so uh, the second big finding is, is that this recessionary period is far, far different than what we experienced a dozen years ago with the Great Recession. One, um, we, are, uh, we are no longer in a situation where when the U.S. gets a cold, Michigan and Detroit get the flu. We are going to be in much better condition coming out in our economy generally than we were out of the Great Recession. We're not going to see this slow slog climb. We are really poised for some really strong economic growth starting later this year and certainly into 22. I mean, really strong economic Which growth. Which feels really good. Uh, Dennis Archer Jr., you're in, you're in the restaurant world. Can you be that optimistic about what's ahead? <laughs> No, I mean, I can be definitely optimistic about the future, but if you were to compare uh, what that future is, say, to a robust 1919 or 2019, rather, in our space, I don't think we get back there this year, but I am optimistic that we're on the path. Um, a number of my colleagues in the greater downtown area uh, are just now reopening. Some still haven't opened because they don't feel they can operate profitably at 25 percent, they most certainly couldn't operate profitably with simply outdoor dining. And so uh, this report, and I applaud Sandy, Tammy, and the team uh, for the report, and I particularly applaud them bringing attention to both the hospitality and entertainment industries, as well as the plight of people of color and people of lesser education. Because if you go through that report over and over and over again, Devin, you see that Black folks, people of color, and people that do not have a graduate degree are hit harder no matter how you measure it. And so this is just a reminder that we need to further educate our folks and bring yeah. the education level up across the board. And that divide and Devin, sadly, just, just, seems to be how it always is with just about any crisis. Yeah, jump in. Yeah, I was just going to say, just real quickly, I would put restaurants and restaurant workers more on that lower side of that K, to yeah. Dennis's point. Well, it's, it's, uh, he makes an important point here, Chad, though. We to have talked a lot, I think, through this last year about uh, the people that have been hit the hardest, about the losers in this deal. I'm not sure we've talked as much about the winners. There have been people who have thrived and done really well over the last year. Yeah, I mean, uh, all, all Dennis has to do is look out the window of his re of his restaurant across across campus Mercer's at one campus Mercer's where Dan Gilbert and Quicken Loans, the rocket companies as they're now called, uh, posted a nine point four billion dollar profit um, <laughs> uh, on uh, uh, an unbelievable year with everybody basically working in their basements selling mortgages at uh, one hundred and thirty some percent more uh, mortgages mortgages originated last year. Part of that's because of the of how favorable the term were because of let record low interest rates and people refining on uh, their houses while they're or, or they're spending money on their houses like more no, like never before right now the home and the home improvement business is, is a is gangbusters you can't find people uh, to to uh, bang out walls and and uh, and do all those renovations that you wanted to do so that you can uh, you know uh, live with the with your surroundings while you're working from home all the time so um, yeah it is uh, a sort of a tale of, of two cities right now and just downtown with the restaurants I don't think you can discount in December 
we recorded 200,000 fewer hospitality workers in, in Michigan than we had in December of 19. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable wow. from the hotels to the convention centers to uh, restaurants and bars and everything in between. Uh, this this industry has been really, really decimated. And and that's why, you know, the recovery of it is, you know, is is uncertain. And, and it adds to the, all the pressure we're going to start seeing at the state level about reopening office space uh, in downtown Detroit. I was in the Renaissance Center the other day, just kind of took, took a walk, um, and it's um, it's creepy uh, how how how, uh, how how empty that place is, and, and you know you it makes it even harder to navigate, it if, even though it was already kind of a maze. It's always it's already a terrible labyrinth to begin with. But Dennis, let me stay with restaurants then there for a second. We've watched a number of other states that have had a very different approach. Uh, the joke is that um, Gretchen Whitmer has been the economic hero of the year for restaurant tours in Indiana and Ohio. Ohio, because that's where people ha have gone. Um, I, I have not heard a lot of pushback from you, even though a lot of your fellow restaurateurs have been filing lawsuits and 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 th putting up quite a fight with what has, uh, has been directed from the governor's mansion. Well, let me say the following about me personally. I, I personally feel that, uh, and my colleagues and partners in our practice, our restaurant, uh, believe that the governor is doing what she thinks is in the uh, the, the best interests of the citizens of the state of Michigan. Um, you do look around at other states and you find different extremes. I mean, we are more open than the state of California, but the state of Florida is wide open. Yeah. And so uh, you see a number of different approaches around the country. I think we will not know which approach uh, worked best until a few years down the line and we look back retrospectively right. to see uh, how the trend shaped up. But back to Chad's point, I mean, the reason I can't, Devin, give a, a solid prediction about when we come back as a restaurant compared to, say, robust 2019 is, to use his example, uh, the rocket companies, they recorded those groundbreaking numbers, record-breaking numbers, with all of their folks working from home. Right. And so I don't know what the impetus is for them to bring everyone back downtown. So even if they bring 50 percent of the people downtown, you know, at some point, those buildings will fill back up, I believe, with other tenants, but that's going to be some time. So I think the downtown hospitality is going to trail, say, even, for instance, neighborhood hospitality. Sandy, I wanted to make sure that we got to that part of this. Uh, as you look toward a recovery, do you feel confident that you know and understand what the changes are that have been made over the last year that are going to stay? A lot of people are going to keep working from home. Uh, listen, I would love to know the answer to that question, and if I did, I would rent myself out and I wouldn't need my day job. <laughs> so here, here's Sandy's rule of crises, is that in a crisis, we always think we're going to change more than we actually do, but at the end of the day, we never change as much as we probably should. So, you know, how we are going to react to this crisis, here's what we, here's what we know. We know there's going to be changes. We know that our lives are going to be forever different in some form or fashion. Exactly how that is and exactly how much that is is the $10,000 question, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I really i am not smart enough to know. Obviously, work from home. Yeah, and it's not just work from home that's going to accelerate. It is work from a whole different zip code. I mean, right now, if you're Dan Gilbert, and this is exactly what he's doing. He doesn't care if his employees live downtown Detroit, Troy, or Denver. And the way they're recruiting new people is that they're getting people from Denver say, hey, join Quicken. Don't worry about moving to the Detroit region yet. Work with us for a while, but maybe a year from now, you'll learn us and you'll, and you'll want to move here, right? So uh, it is really creating uh, a new flexibility for both employers and employees that we have never seen in society before, and that's going to be a big change. Uh, Denver, I'm thinking about packing up my green screen and trying Sydney. Uh, Chad, let me let you weigh in on what kind of changes you think um, stay. stay. Yeah, I mean, Jay Farner, a CEO of Rocket Companies, just talked to us the other day about that issue that they can recruit people from around the world. I mean, he, they're pretty serious about that, and and it's changed. They're right now reconfiguring their their conference rooms so they can have 
three people in the conference room and six people in 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 maybe six different states or countries. Uh, and so uh, it is. This is totally flipped uh, how we work, where we work, on its head. And I I I could just cannot see it going back to the way it used to be. And and so we have a lot of challenges to adapt to that. I mean, yeah. City Trade right this year they they were projecting eighty five million dollars in loss in in income tax for the city of Detroit. Uh, for from uh, city income t uh, city income tax from people working right, uh, right. at home and remote and that's that's going to have a major impact on the city's financial future and staying out of bankruptcy court in the future Boy, for that, that matter. That's one we haven't heard people talk much about. All right, Chad, Sandy, Dennis, thanks so much for the time, guys. Really appreciate. It. I got to I got to leave it there and get to a break. Happy birthday, Dennis. We'll take a quick break. Back with more on Flashpoint right after this.